I uh, see things freeze up just a little bit. I am having a uh, fantastic chat uh, with Christopher Lemon, Chris Lemon, the son of an iconic actor that everybody in this country and the world knows, Jack Lemon, the actor and father of uh, Chris. Uh, last night I saw at the Rubicon Theater, we're going to do a little plug here in the beginning, but at the Rubicon the Theater, yes. uh, I saw uh, Chris's one man show, Jack Lemon Returns. Uh, a play version uh, or play uh, realization of Christopher's uh, book about his father, Twist of Lemon. Uh, Jack Lemon Returns, uh, written by Hershey Felder, who is very, very famous. Uh, uh, co-written. Co co-written. Oh, so you were involved, obviously. Of course, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. my story. There you go. Uh, but but Hershey, Hershey uh, Felder is, is so well known for his one-man shows also about very famous composers. I mean, Beethoven, Gershwin, Chopin, Liszt. Uh, and so this is a, a great mutual compliment to both of you because this, uh, this, uh, this play last night uh, about Jack Lemmon is uh, not only very, very funny, uh, but also very moving, very touching, uh, a, a great uh, memoir of your dad. Uh, and well, thanks, so, yeah. so, so we're going to talk about it. Um, let me let me do the goodies so that Rubicon will be happy with me. First, box office telephone number for Rubicon Theater Company in Ventura. Uh, you cannot say enough about Rubicon, and and uh, they are just a, an absolutely brilliant uh, gem in Ventura's uh, worldview, if you will. They Phone really are. I'm just having a wonderful time at that theater. They're just great people, and it's a lovely house. Wonderful. I'm glad you say that. Everybody does. Uh, listen, box office phone number. Now, now, uh, Jack Lemon Returns is going to be running through, hang on, I'll find it, through March 29th. Yes. So that's only about another week or so. People are going to need to, those of you in Southern California, I know a lot of uh, subscribers uh, watching this are in throughout Southern California, Los Angeles. Uh, you're going to have to get on the line. I'm going to give you the phone number and buy tickets to this incredible. Hal Worthington said, come on down. <laughs> I remember Hal. I think he may still be alive. I don't know, but anyway, I uh, hope he is. the the show runs as I said through March 29th. The box office telephone number at Rubicon Theater in Ventura is area code 805-667-2900. Do not waste a minute. Get on the phone and buy tickets to this am amazing uh, one man. Uh, show by the son of Jack Lemon, Chris Christopher Lemon. Okay, I want you know I want to. There, there's so much to ask. I, I have to kind of keep an eye on the clock here. But but uh, oh by the way, uh, the, uh, Chris and I are our Cal Arts grads. Now I don't know if that means anything, but uh, I, uh, we've got That's something right. in common. We're we're both Cal Arsians. Cal Arsians, as you said last night in the green room, and it uh, nearly fell on the floor. And also, let me just make make clear here. This guy is a graduate in. Composition and music from Cal Arts, so we're not fooling around. This is not. Uh, uh, and, and by the way, uh, if I may, as I complimented you in an earlier email, the piano not only is a second character in this play, but your playing is magnificent. So Thank as so as was your father's. Let, why don't we just? I'm going to plunge ahead here. I want to talk about genetics for just a minute because what was so obvious was the you look just like your dad when you take on his character, uh, Chris. Yeah, if I don't, we're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That would be a whole other question. Uh, but but you take on the character of your dad, that that vivacious, I guess, for lack of another word, that that tremendously hyper energized yeah. uh, uh, personality that Jack Lemon had. Uh, but you also, of course, have the look, and also this sitting down at the piano. Let's do just an overview about how that all came about. He, your father, taught you the piano. He took you to the piano. Go there for me. Won't you give me yeah. give me that? Yeah, it, it's you know, uh, I, my mother and father were divorced at a very early age. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is sort of the crux of the story, uh, a father and son who were ripped apart and then managed to come back together, uh, the best of friends against all odds, uh, um, only to have the father die at a tra tragically early age. So it, it really is a very tragic story at its core, uh, but of course it's couched in the lore of the golden age of Hollywood. So there's all those wonderful characters and stories that, that, that revolve around this, this, uh, this father-son story. But, but uh, basically my father and mother remained good friends and uh, I think that he was very regretful um, uh, about the divorce uh, and, and the fact that they that, that that the bond was broken, so to speak, as you hear through the course of the story, and he would come over to uh, to where she lived in Harold Lloyd's old beach house on Santa Monica oh, Beach, this crazy old kind of wild old rambling place on Santa Monica Beach during that that really 
age of Camelot that existed down there in, in Los Angeles in the late 60s, early 70s. He'd come over pretty much every day uh, uh, when he wasn't working, and, and he'd sit down at the piano and play. And of course, I would come over and, and, you know, and, and start you know, pounding away next to him. And, and finally, he says, kid, I think if you're going to start playing with me every time I come over here, you're going to need to learn how to do it. <laughs> so he started teaching me how to play, and then he says, "I think you need to take a few lessons too." And so I started taking lessons, and you know, and uh, and the monster was born, so to speak. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, it, it 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 was it was really a very pivotal thing because it was also music that ended up bringing us back together after we were yeah. ripped apart. So yeah, yeah, and, and a typically a typically long lemon answer to your to your to your question. That was marvelous. We do a half hour on hello us lemon. So. That, that, that was marvelous, and I thank you for that. But also about uh, the instrument, the piano, just being uh, and musicians, all, everybody knows this, the idea of, of solace. Uh, your father, through some troubles that we'll, uh, we'll discuss, I, I, it's obvious that the piano was a great uh, retreat, a great solace for him. Uh, and go ahead, talk to that. Yeah, I, it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, you know, I think it's maybe even more true of those who, who are kind of what I would deem by ear players. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it really is a, a choice to take up an instrument and become really uh, quite adept at it um, uh, if you're not a studied, uh, 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 if you haven't studied the, the craft and the theory of it. Um, and uh, I was, I, you know, though I studied classical piano, I, I think I might put myself in the by ear department too. I, it's how I started. Um, sure. And uh, uh, it, it, it's it really has to be born out of a great love uh, of, of doing what you're doing. Um, and it becomes for you, yes, a, a solace. Yes, an enormously comforting thing in your life. And yes, an escape. Um, you know, there's there's so much pressure in life, and I think there was for Pop, too. I mean, you know, obviously this, this man was the biggest box office star for about a decade in Hollywood and was a, a, a staple uh, worldwide. Um, so there's a lot of pressure that goes along with that. Um, even if you are as delightful a human being as my father was. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to escape into music uh, was, was a wonderful thing for him. And then for us to be able to share that and to take it even a step further, to have it be the catalyst that brought us back together after mm -hmm. being ripped apart as we were. Uh, it, it, it made music very, very special for us individually and for both of us as, as a father and a son. And I, I uh, hate to hate to uh, label you particularly in this way, but you know, people who are great successes are also obsessed with career, uh, with what they do, and yes. that puts the pressure on. You know, and they, as you, as we, as you, the play makes clear, his uh, you know, Jack's uh, uh, character, if you will, was twenty four seven. I mm -hmm. have a feeling. Well, yes, uh, it's 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 a, a very important uh, part of of the narrative of, of this story. Uh, the fact is, yes, uh, he was uh, career did come first, and that was one of the the uh, things that. Um, yeah. And uh, it, 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 there's there's a, a very very you know a touching touching moment in the play, if I may be so bold as to say, uh, where Jack. I become Jack for the play. I do the do it in in my father's voice. Uh, Jack confesses to the audience that um, that he placed his career first over his family, um, and it just was the way it was. This this was you know this was his life, and you know what? It's a little understandable too. Uh, I, I chose not to as a father. Actually, I chose to do the exact opposite. I took off uh, and went off to New England to raise my three kids. It was that important to me. And now I've got three kids in college at the same time at uh, Trinity, uh, LaSalle, and Yale. My daughter was a master's <laughs> study at Yale. We were, uh, Dan and I were joking earlier that, that we place, we place, my father went to Harvard. We were joking about Yale and Harvard, that, that we definitely place CalArts in that category as well. Uh, but uh, so this play had better succeed, three kids yeah. in college at the same yeah. time. Um, but no, I, it, and I think it may have been a reaction to that, uh, but it was what it was. The guy realized his own fallacies and and, and his own shortfalls, uh, and 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 tried to do something about that. And he made a conscious effort to bring us back together. And that's what this story is all about. Yeah, and I I, I love uh, this idea of discipline. 
the importance of discipline and your father's discipline in realizing when things uh, were out of hand, his alcoholism, and the really tremendous discipline of coming, you know, getting off of that road, that self-destructive yeah. road. In the play, you mentioned that very, very moment where he has had a tremendous binge and all of a sudden there you are as a young kid standing in the doorway. You want yeah. to just touch on that for just a second? And sure, yeah, I, I got a call um, out of the blue and uh, uh, the maid called me and said, you need to come over right now. And I came over in the house, it was a wreck. It was booze, there was, as my father says in the play, booze, broken glass, and blood. He'd, he'd yeah. fallen down and cut his head open. And there was booze, broken glass, and blood all over the place. And I walked into it. And he came walking down the stair, and he took a look at me, and as, as my father says, I walked down the stairs, you know, still drunk, hung over with a, a bloody dish towel hanging off the side of my head. And I see my kid looking at me with those questions in his eyes. And I realized this is what he'd looked at for the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I swore that would never happen again. And yeah. it didn't. Yeah, very powerful. And, 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 but, uh, but with such pride, mm -hmm. because he'd made that decision. Exactly. And I was able to see this incredibly courageous man make a gut-wrenching decision. And he never did. He never looked back. He never had one drink after that. I stand mm -hmm. testament to yeah. that, because I was with him. That's what I mean about discipline. His discipline as an actor, his discipline as a thinker, as a great man, and his discipline when there was trouble fixing it. Fixing yeah. me. Like his relationship with you. He was a fine man. Uh, uh, yeah. My father raised the bar wherever he went uh, mm -hmm. for everyone he met. And I've done my very best to emulate that in my life. And I, it is my, my, my duty to emulate it in this, in this show. And let's just talk about forgiveness. May I salute you? There was plenty to to uh, be very uh, angry about, I presume. What, what I don't was have any patience for wire wire coat hanger stars kids. I just don't. I mean, our our, our, our sons and daughters are overseas, getting blown up for our country, mm -hmm. and uh, I just don't have any patience. You know, you get dealt your cards, you play them. That's it. Don't complain about them. Yeah. You know, uh, you know. Yes, it's my duty to tell you the story. It's my duty, if I'm going to tell you that story, to show you all the bumps in the road. We all have them. This story may be unique. It may be about Jack and Chris Lemon, but it is very universal. Uh, it takes place uh, in every home in, in the world. Uh, and so, no, uh, the wire coat hangers, I'm a star's kid, oh, poor me, go. <laughs> Well put. That being said, hey, listen, it's you know there, there's it's it's not easy. I mean, yeah, uh, I think especially the whole fact that you know that you're you're raised, you you spend your adolescence identified as an object, not a person. I was I was never Chris Lemon growing up. I was Jack Lemon's son. You know, you're Jack Lemon's son. Oh, he's my absolute favorite. Tell your daddy we love him, won't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. What was your name again? Oh, well, that doesn't matter. You know that that does exist. Uh, yeah. But uh, but no, don't complain about it. There's there's a lot of people with with much bumpy roads than us stars kids and you were you were quote Jack's my little hot shot I was the hot shot yeah he's my little hot shot <laughs> I, I want to just touch on uh, on a particular episode that's brought up in the play this episode of the two of you going fishing yeah yeah. Give, 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 give my uh, my folks that are watching this that little overview and then what I really want to ask you is did did you see him uh, I, get, I hate. I don't want to be insulting, but for real, as opposed to that persona, that hyper uh, persona, was he somehow quiet out there in the wilderness? Go, go ahead. Give me the anecdote. No, and talk no, to that. he was never quiet. So that was Jack it's Lemon. Wilderness. It doesn't make any difference. <laughs> no, no, it's. it's uh, uh, you know, no. What, again, one of he he made a conscious effort. He realized what was going on, and he made a conscious effort to bring us back together. Um, and and that was a very brave thing for him to do as well. Uh, he fought against those monsters that had pulled us apart, which I call the voices in his ear in the play, because it's my duty to let you decide who and why and all of that stuff. I can't tell you as a narrator or else I'm not being a good storyteller. So um, I, I, the voices whispering in his ear that pulled us apart, um, he realized it over the course of time and it and began to bring us back together, a conscious decision on his part. And one of the first things he did, it later it became golf at Pebble Beach, which was which is a comedy in itself. Um, uh, you know, Jack and Chris Lemon playing golf together is is really it's very funny. I, just trust me on this. 
Uh, but but even funnier was us fishing together in Alaska because you know it, it's uh, you know there was a lot of falling in the water, being chased by bears, otters, chipmunks. Have you ever seen a grown man chased by a chipmunk? It's it's sad. It, it, it's uh, and and yes, you would think that there would be some communing with nature in that incredibly glorious place, but no, it was more like knots and fly lines and you know and, 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 and oh I've got a fish, what tweet right into the drink um, and. And just lots of laughter, lots and lots of laughter. Boy, when you were with, with Jack Lemon, you laughed a lot. And may I say, be so bold as to say, me too. Um, you know, we're, we 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 love fun and funny and laugh and being and 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 that's the real thing. That was the final. Well, it was really music. That that was the final catalyst that really brought us back together. We could jam all night long. We'd play the blues, man. We'd just play the blues for hours. We could do it for hours. I can't sit in for hours and play the blues now, you know, unless he was sitting by my side. I miss him that much. Um, but anyways, you know, I don't even fish anymore. I don't even play golf. I can't. It's not the, it's not the same without him. It's just I, I stopped playing golf. And you, uh, let me let me interrupt for just a second. You forgot. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. You, uh, well, well, no, no, no. You forgot the real punchline, which was apparently he tried and tried and tried to do. I'm, I don't know much, much about golf, but the idea was he tried and tried and tried at Pebble Beach, and you apparently uh, knocked it right I into did the make hole. cut. Yes, he never forgave. <laughs> In 35 years, he tried to make the cut at Pebble Beach, and I, I made, I made the cut, and uh, he never let me forget it. He did, however, follow me around all day Sunday and tell me how to play every single shot. Oh, that's terribly rude of him, isn't it? Yeah. He was no, trying no, to throw you off. Oh, okay, that's, 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 that's him. That's him. You should have seen. What, I remember the first year there I played the Celebrity Scramble and, uh, and somehow managed to actually make it through to the very last hole. Um, and I look across and my competitor is baseball superstar Mark McGuire. Well, of course it's Mark McGuire. You know what? I'm a lemon. Of course it's going to be Mark McGuire. Why couldn't it be Alice Cooper? But it's Mark McGuire. And as McGuire is, is flexing his huge muscles over the ball, my father sidles up to me, looking at him like he would look at a, at a pissed-off grizzly bear up in Alaska. Mm -hmm. Looking at McGuire, he goes, that's, that's one big son of a bitch, isn't it? <laughs> I say, Pop, you're out of the tournament. You, 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 you dropped out three holes ago. You're trying to game me? He says, I'm not trying to game you. I'm not trying to game you. But that's one big son of a bitch. And then McGuire impossibly takes this incredible swing at the ball and hits it off the heel of his club and straight into the water. My father, my father turns to me and says, you just won. And then equally unbelievably, the, the ball hits the only rock sticking up out of the water, ricochets off of it, and right back into the middle of the fairway. My father turns to me and says, you just lost. <laughs> Nice to have a guy like that around, you know. Look at that. That was like being with Jack Lemon. <laughs> Would you mind doing the profile just once more? See what I mean, everybody? Uh, well, you can, uh, I think. My daughter, got to... you should see my daughter, the, the, the Yale master student. She's got the same profile. Wow. Yeah. Well, they obviously, uh, 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 what shall I say? And and ambition and intelligence and all the rest of it goes in the runs in the family. Uh, and I think the uh, all of those people out there that are watching this have an idea of what this uh, incredible evening of one man uh, theater. It's a fun night. Like. Come on yeah. down. Yeah. Well, thank thank you again, Cal. Uh, listen, let me just run through the uh, goodies again, and I think we're finished. Chris uh, Chris Lemon, Christopher Lemon, thank you very, very much for giving oh, me. Oh, my pleasure, Dan. Thanks for having minutes. me. We are talking about the play Jack Lemon Returns, and who else could do it but his son, uh, Chris Lemon. The play is written by Hershey Felder, in co uh, obviously in cooperation with Christopher. Hello. Oh, point, point the, point it's, 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 it was based on my book, and then Hershey yeah. came in and threw some stuff in. Yeah. And we're talking about the Rubicon Theatre Company, which is always, uh, always presents amazing programs, uh, amazing plays. And it's, a, it's just a, a gem in, uh, in the Ventura area. And, and just a, so you know, March 29th, it's coming up fast. Uh, that's the last opportunity you're going to have to see this wonderful play and to see uh, Chris Lemon play some magnificent music, by the way. You're a fabulous pianist. CalArts did you good, apparently, and your dad obviously uh, paved the way in, in uh, giving you that training from whatever it was a pianist. Yeah. Uh, we're talking March 29th. It, it run, the play runs through March 29th at the Rubicon Theater in Ventura. Box office number for tickets. Come on, get your pens, get your paper ready. Area code 805. 
six six seven two nine zero zero. I saw the play last night. I'm going to be thinking about it for a long, long time oh, thanks, to come. It's a wonderful all theater too, room. boy. I love, yeah. I love that theater. It's just yeah. terrific. It's yeah. got such a wonderful, warm, and welcoming feel. Yeah. yeah. Hats off to all the folks at the Rubicon. Chris Lemon, thank you very much indeed for the time. Appreciate thank you, Dan. It. Right.